Hi everyone, I'm Claude. And I'm Clinton, and we're the Lamest Defenders. On today's episode of We've Got Issues, I'm doing a review of Spider-Man, written by J.J. Abrams and his son. I check out the new Guardians of the Galaxy, written by Donnie Kent. And I also review the History of the Marvel Universe, Part 3. And Claude passes Arrow, number 3, on to me, which I am not happy about. I was just too busy. Welcome back, everyone. So let's just hop into this review for this week. So the first one that we got on the plate is J.J. Abrams and his son, mm -hmm. Henry Abrams, uh, written Spider-Man comic. Yep. So it's part of a mini series. There are five, and this is issue number one. First thing I want to say is the art by Sarah Pacelli is absolutely gorgeous. It's awesome. That's... That's a highlight of this book. Yeah. And um, another highlight that I had with this entire comic was the fact that it starts off so fast. Mm -hmm. And it re it starts off fast and heavy. So there is a surprising death. In it. And I won't give it away, but it was just within, I think, two, three pages that it just hits you with that. And it's a major character for the Spider-Man lore. Okay. Uh, from there, it... Um, slows down and it does a time jump and we all love time jumps mm -hmm. so this is 12 years in the future mm -hmm. and apparently Peter Parker and his wife Mary Jane had a son uh, Ben Ben Parker who uh, I guess is in high school now and he is a yank a very angsty mm -hmm. young man very um, it just kind of seems like a trope like I guess if you're in high school you always have a chip on your shoulder because yeah. it's hard guys high school's hard yeah. so <laughs> Anyway, because Spider-Man couldn't save this person in the beginning of the comic 12 years prior, he is basically a uh, deadbeat dad. He's not around, and uh, he is written almost like uh, not like Peter Parker at all. That sounds like someone who would take uh, great responsibility. Very seriously, right? Yeah. Oh, and it's just um, he's never around, and uh, it's just he's a jerk. And his son, maybe that's why he's angsty, because he doesn't have a father figure yeah. around. And it's it's kind of, reading this, it kind of felt depressing, because it's just like, I don't know this character that's I'm supposed to... out. <laughs> I don't know this character that's supposedly, you know, Peter Parker. And it also felt like I've read this story before. It's just this depressing Spider-Man, this alternate universe, and it's just... So wait a minute, you're telling me a J.J. Abrams produced anything yeah. is rehashing a story, but looks nice. Yeah, look that great. doesn't sound like anything <laughs> like J.J. Abrams at all. Wow. <laughs> now who has a chip on their shoulder? Shots fired. That's it's awesome. true. Also, one of the other highlights before I get even more into the negatives was uh, I really enjoyed as stupid as the name is for this villain, Cadaverous. That's took two writers for yeah. that one. He there's not much of him, but there's enough where you want to see more. And um, it's basically it seems like a, just a human and a big robot, and he's stuck in there. And when you first see him, when he first fights Spider Man, he's like, Spider Man, please help me. So mm. it, that was kind of cool. So uh, and he has basically a, uh, he's an overlord of all you know these uh, dangerous robots too, kind of like Ultron almost. Say, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't want to be there apparently. Okay. And uh, so that was one of the highlights for me. Um, and it's just I don't know. It's uh, this comic's four ninety nine. And really what you're paying for is the beginning and the art. And yeah. is it worth it to you guys? Because it isn't to me. I The variant cover looked cool. Really but cool. That was, that was about it. Yeah. I, I put it on a shelf. Yeah. Never touch it. Never read it again. <laughs> just like all collectibles, I guess. <laughs> I just, um, you know, for four ninety nine, I I just can't recommend this comic. Uh, and it's kind of ridiculous because this is another Spider-Man ongoing series. That brings the total count to like 20-something. So it's insane. They're really milking this, and um, 
uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to continue to pick it up so I can review it, but if I, no. I, yeah. If I wasn't as hardcore of a Spider-Man fan, I would have never touched this thing. Yeah. So, Guardians of the Galaxy number nine. Uh, last issue, the truth, of, I'm sorry, the Universal Church of Truth, which is being led by uh, Peter Quill's dad, mm -hmm. uh, is basically wanting to, uh, they want to beat death. Kind of sounds similar if you read the Infinity Gauntlet yeah. series at all. Yeah. Uh, only Thanos wanted to impress death when uh, it went her over. Oh, Lord, here we yeah. go again. So <laughs> um, what he wants to do is he'll have to sap life energy to power up these pods that basically look like something that you would have Adam Warlock in. And his dad in the comics is not Ego, the huge no, planet. No, no. It's completely it's like different. J-A apostrophe S-O-N. So it's Jason, but it's like Yasun or something right, like that. Right, yeah, so and he right. doesn't have these planet powers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Celestial. He is, uh, he's called the Patriarch in this one. And he's basically the, now the leader of this church. But he's under some type of mental influence. And what happens with uh, this, his plot point is that he wants to power up these pods. And by doing so, he's going to have to take life off of a planet. So he's targeted Earth. He's saying that he wants to take, he said two continents should be more than enough. Mm. But it's like, oh, so mm. that's, you want to take your son's home? home? Like, what's yeah. wrong with you? So... Obviously, Peter has a problem with that. <laughs> he tries to stop him. Um, elsewhere, Rocket, Moon Dragon, and Groot are trying to find. Uh, they're trying to basically get the group, get the game back together, mm -hmm. the band back together. Yeah. So they're on a uh, unknown planet to the reader. It's that is redacted. You know, you can't, we don't know. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then they, they come across uh, Magus, and they, they're fighting. They're fighting aliens who look like uh, between Tremors and Starship Troopers, like those weird. The bug thing? Yeah, exactly. So like Zerg like from that. StarCraft. A little bit, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Magic shows up and then says, hey, quit hurting my friends. And then they're trying to just, it just ends abruptly on that point. Okay. So that kind of bummed me out because it was just like a page and a half, but two yeah. pages of it. So okay. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but it, the, it ends with a big reveal that you're led to believe is Adam Warlock because they power up one because Peter wants, Peter's dad wants to show him what's in this pod. And it's not, it's not Adam Warlock. Uh, it is a destroyer oh. of some kind. Okay. So hmm. I don't want to say anything, uh, but it's another great, great series by uh, Donny Cates. Uh, this guy's killing it right yeah. now. He's he's really Give good. Give this man a race. He I I love this ensemble. It gives him so much to work with. I really like this. Mm -hmm. It's issue three of a. Six issue story arc, all okay. contained in Guardians. I get it; it's fun, definitely. So, yeah. uh, so for my next and final comic for this week, it's the history of the Marvel Universe number three. So this one really picks up, really in the early '60s with the creation of the Fantastic Four, how they got their powers, what they're doing. Also, which a previous issue kind of told a little bit, but this one kind of gets into the backstory with them and ties it in with Namor. Uh, the Avengers, it kind of tells how they got together, and then uh, the backstory of the Hulk, Peter Parker. Uh, the Avengers storyline is pretty cool because um, they compare and contrast how they're beloved by the people that they save. Like publicly, everybody loves the Avengers, but the X Men are doing the same exact thing, but they're hated because I guess they're a different type of people, the mutants. So that was kind of cool, the correlation with those two groups and how they compared them. Um, and really, since issue one, how this whole thing got started was it's Galactus and Franklin Richards, who is the most powerful mutant basically ever. Yeah. And it takes place in the future and the universe is ending. So mm -hmm. Franklin is asking Galactus to kind of tell the story of the entire universe since the beginning. And narratively, like it was kind of confusing because Galactus is the one talking in the panels and you know, explaining the history. And then all of a sudden it says, oh, your parents went to Antarctica. And I had to remember, I had to draw back from the first issue that it's Galactus talking to Franklin. Oh, okay. yeah. So I, I was like, what is going on here? My parents, I never <laughs> went there. So, um, that, was, that was a bummer. So there was some, uh, I guess, confusing narrative uh, portions in this. And it kind of ends up with uh, the very last panel. It's uh, Jean Grey sacrificing herself as Dark Phoenix. So we're going okay. more towards the 80s and the 90s now uh, for the next issue. 
really, it's cool. It's four ninety nine again. All my comics were this week. Um, I'm not complaining about it, but I'm very <laughs> yeah. I'm hurt. And um, it's basically pick this up if you're if you're interested in um, really yeah generally the history of how everything yeah. is now and mm-hmm. how Marvel has retconned it to what it is. And uh, the art's really cool because it's kind of that 60s yeah, classic that, yeah. comic that book, like pop art. Yeah. Um, but other than that, if I didn't really care about, you know, all this stuff, because most of it is told in movies that you already know, yeah. I probably wouldn't I wouldn't get it, especially at the price. But if it's issue three, I mean, if you're already on board, I guess just keep <laughs> keep on trucking. Keep, keep chugging along. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, Arrow 3. The best comic we picked up this week. Yeah. Arrow 3. The only thing I have written down for Arrow 3 is a poopy emoji. <laughs> uh, this sucks. <laughs> like, I I hope you like the color blue, because it is blue... Da, blue dee, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> That's all this is. It's uh, very blue. It sucks. So I'm just going to read, just to give everyone a taste yeah. at home. There's this little... They always have like a little introduction page, like just to kind of catch you up on the story. And no boy, I was, doozy. I was laughing about this for probably a solid minute. Yeah, honestly. because I read the first two issues and the other reviews, but I, I just couldn't do it this week. Yeah. So uh, he ha- he wasn't too and familiar. This, this might be it, honestly. I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> it's going back to if, me. If you can't, I'm not doing this either. <laughs> so uh, Arrow is a... Is she a mutant? I, I don't know what she is. She just basically has the power of wind. Um, and some of her friends... It basically sounds like Captain Planet. Yeah. Like it, it sounds so much like Captain Planet, like Earth, Wind, Fire, whatever. So yeah, heart. <laughs> so uh, it just basically describes her as a character. And this little bit says, as a brilliant architect, she's achieved success for herself and her city, all the while leading a second life as a superhero. The key for Ling is all about balance, even if it means using her powers to dodge a marriage proposal from her boyfriend, Zhao Yu. <laughs> it's stupid. Like, it's the stupidest thing I've read. It's it's just... I, I, I mean, she gets beaten up a little bit by this half-rock monster thing. Well, in the first two issues, it was like literally buildings sent, you know, like buildings with a mind control. Yeah, yeah, oh, it, yeah I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah no, it's just... This is bad. Like this is really bad. The thing is, I think I know what Marvel's getting at, because it's. I think they want the Chinese market. This mm-hmm. is what they're going for. Because if they get point one percent, point zero one percent of the U.S. market, that's nothing. But if they get point zero one percent of the Chinese market, yeah, then they can say it's a huge success, right? So because we don't know the sales numbers is, of the first no. two, and, and I, it, it's translated from Chinese, like right. it's in the back, like they show the translations, and I'm just like, oh, that's that's what you're doing. Yeah. So basically, you're saying don't buy this. No, don't buy it. No, no, mm. of course not. Don't yeah. support this in any way. Don't even say the word. Don't. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm tempted. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for reading this goofy uh, episode of yeah. We've Got Issues. So if you guys haven't watched it already, we did make a uh, kind of a funny music video yeah, regarding yeah. Spider-Man leaving the MCU. Check that out. Some people were hurt about it more than others. So. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, well. Well, Daredevil's not in there either. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys uh, pretty soon. Thanks. Stay lame. Bye. <laughs> Hi, everyone. All right. Well, (laughs) you want me to start?